Everybody, it's Tyler here at Sugar Rush, checking with 9364H Hailstorm, a great season so far that they've had. Uh, an event win and uh, signature as well, too. Finalists at Haunted, some finalists at Mo as well, too. So keep moving up and up. Can't wait to see how they do here as well. I love this awesome Lobot, by the way. A lot of cool things that go into this. We're going to be talking about why they didn't go with the match loader, some of their strategy that goes into uh, just utilizing their opponent's tri balls, but a lot more will be digging into this robot as well as all the different mechanisms that we'll be covering. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. No, we got to start off talking about your uh, base iterations overall. And, and one of the things we mentioned in the uh, preview is that you don't have a match load as well, too. So I'd love to hear about that. And we'll wrap up with your wings as well. OK, so our base is actually designed specifically for speed. So as you can see here, we actually have no gears on our base. It is 600 direct, 8 motor. Wow. And that's actually really fun because what that allows us to do is maneuver around the field a lot more effectively than a lot of other teams on the field, especially for field control. Basically, what that means is that whenever there's a large group of tri balls and we see it and an opponent sees it, we can get there first pretty easily. Uh, we also have a pretty simple set of wings on our robot. Um, they're not locking, just simple pneumatic wings. We haven't had any issues with them getting pushed back. But what this allows us to do is have great tri ball control, great fielding. Uh, he mentioned the, mat the lack of our match loader which is actually a strategic decision because of the fact that we can use our opponent's match loads very effectively and have been able to use them very effectively throughout the season without introducing any match loads of our own and still achieve high scoring. When you're looking at uh, this game in general, when did that strategy really come into play that you weren't going to go with match loads uh, at all and this is the route that you wanted to go? Because you kind of got to fully commit to it, really. Right. And we started out with that at Mall, and we started out with a bot without wings, just a simple defense bot. Our thought was to de-score, and we actually at Mall figured out about more of the strategy of tri-ball control. Our bot was a bit slower, and so what we really decided to do is turn this bot from more of a direct defense bot where we're pushing teams off the match loader and playing a lot of, de a lot of direct defense into playing indirect defense. And so how we designed our robot now is to be able to build off of those strengths that we saw at Mall because teams were loading against us and we were semi-effectively able to field against them, but we we're actually able to do that more effectively now because our robot is faster and has wings. Well, that's awesome. And with the direct drive, I got to ask you as well, too, on that. I mean, you're, you're probably the only team I can think of that we've interviewed this year that has gone direct drive for that. Uh, talk to me about the testing process for that when you were actually saying, like, you know, that you were going to get enough torque out of what you're doing and that you weren't worried about, you know, even like browning out or something like that on it, too. So really the testing process has come down to driving it around the field. There's a lot of obstacles on this year's field. It's really important to be able to get over all of those maneuverability obstacles, central barriers, side barriers, anything of that sort. And so essentially what that's come down to is strategic testing. We've made routes in practices for him specifically to go over those barriers and to make sure that even when the base is low, we're still going to be able to get over and still going to be able to maneuver around the field effectively. Also, we've been scrimming with other teams, both in our area and our program, and we've been testing it at tournaments, especially this is our first tournament with 600 direct. But in our past iterations of our robot, we've made sure to test everything at tournaments. And so we've effectively been able to determine if it's going to have enough torque and have enough space to be able to play effectively as we want it to. Let's keep moving on. We're going to pass over to Nate. He's going to talk about the uh, hanging blocker uh, integration, that mechanism we have it as well. So, of course, I know we'll see that come up as well, but just talk to me about that packaging because when you're going with such a low bot, packaging is so important with something like this. Yeah, absolutely. So, essentially, our past iterations of this robot, we've had a passive barrier hang where it deploys on the sides, and we've had some trouble getting that with the flat bot, uh, center of gravity and stuff. It's been pretty inconsistent just with the speed and that. So, we decided to go for a passive barrier hang, or excuse me, not barrier hang, uh, horizontal bar hang, and we decided to have that rise up from the front of the robot using a two-piston release system, like that. So we have 
these uh, angle pieces here attached to this box angle here, and that is the perfect angle and height to have us climb up onto the horizontal bar, and it hangs us about an inch to an inch and a half off the ground, and it's very consistent from what we've seen. Um, on top of that, we decided to add a blocker as well. We saw the opportunity to raise this up higher, try to block some lower shooters as they tried to match load. Uh, we've had a problem blocking lower shooters in the past when fielding from across the field, so we decided to add this blocker so that we can directly deal with those. Um, that way, if they have a higher arc or whatever, we can try to stop them before that becomes an issue. Yeah, it gives it a little versatility, right? And I think talking before with your drive is that you're, you're kind of able to bully whoever you want on the field a lot of times, sure. right? Uh, so that, that makes a big difference as well. Um, when you were looking um, from, from adding on that blocker, is there anything maybe looking to the future that you might still want to add onto this? Like, is it possible to add another stage or anything like that to get even taller? Um, we've considered adding another stage to it. Uh, it's This robot was built pretty quickly before Sugar Rush, so we didn't have a lot of time to fine tune things. But yeah, we're, we've talked about adding another stage, also trying to add another barrier hang sure. in conjunction with our wind point mechanism, which Ken will talk about in a minute. And I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. This robot's going to see this in probably one more tournament, and that's about it. So. Fair enough. Uh, Kim, let's talk about that wind point uh, mechanism as well. And then uh, a couple of other cool things. Uh, we got to show off this, uh, the claw, the matic claw you're doing as well, too. I think it's an interesting yeah, uh, take um, on this game. We stuck with the same claw design since around Mall of America. The main difference between the initial design and the one design that we have now is we had a uh, linear puncher that was just essentially a piston that would push out and uh, help us score try balls. We found that it was a waste of pneumatics and we were running out of pneumatics during matches. So we decided to just go for a simpler design and uh, stop using the claws much for match play and specifically for autons. Since we could, due to our wings, we have an effective scoring mechanism already. So during autons, a, a tri ball will, usually on the line, it will be placed there. The robot drives over and then it just closes the two pistons. It allows for very precise movements However, we have found that a few issues would just specifically be match play, um, but we found that we don't actually need that since we have the wings. The second mechanism that we have is our win point descoring mechanism. This is passive. Uh, we're thinking of making it active on our next robot, but um, it works for now. What we have is it starts out of the robot. It's banded so that it will stay out. And then when we, during our auton, we slam into the wall, or we lightly graze the wall. Sure. And this allows it to go just far enough to where it can fold into the robot. This allows us to get the autonomous win point and uh, just rank higher. Well, Iron Eagles Hailstorm, as we're filming this right now, looking pretty good, and I know looking for even more things here at Sugar Rush as well, so can't wait to see how you do. But thanks a lot for taking time. A really cool take on this game, and it's always cool to see unique robots with that. So I wish you the best of luck here, and of course, throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot, guys. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.